In a magnetic confinement nuclear fusion facility, the central element is the tokamak, the Russian acronym for magnetic toroidal chamber. It is a donut-shaped enclosure, which is initially evacuated. Several groups of coils surround the tokamak. These are the so-called toroidal field coils. Their superconducting windings must carry a huge current in this direction, up to a few tens of kiloamperes. The toroidal coils generate an extremely intense magnetic field inside the chamber. The magnetic field lines look like this. Under these conditions, when a deuterium and tritium plasma is injected into the chamber, all the particles are forced to describe helical trajectories like these twisted along the field lines. This prevents the plasma from getting close to the chamber walls. On the other hand, the plasma must be heated up to temperatures of the order of 100 million degrees. Part of the work is done by a second set of coils, the so-called central solenoid. To understand how it works, let's do an experiment. This coil plays the role of the central solenoid. With this generator, we can vary the current carried by the coil. This second coil is somewhat like our plasma. It is connected to this ammeter. Let's look at the current readings on this scale and on this one. Every time we modify the current in the inner coil, an induced current appears in the outer one, that is, the electrons in the coil are driven. The same principle governs the interaction between the plasma and the central solenoid. When an intense variable current flows through it, all the particles, deuterium ions, tritium ions and electrons are vigorously boosted, in one direction the ions and the electrons in the opposite direction. The collisions between particles increase the agitation of the plasma, that is, its temperature, which can thus reach tens of millions of degrees. The desired temperature is reached using additional heating methods. Irradiating the plasma with electromagnetic waves of suitable frequencies, as in a huge microwave oven, and bombarding the plasma with jets of high energy neutral deuterium atoms. If technical difficulties not yet solved are surmounted, deuterium and tritium nuclei will have enough kinetic energy to overcome their mutual electrostatic repulsion will come into close contact and fusion reactions will occur, releasing significant amounts of energy, much higher than those invested in heating the plasma.